Greetings, vibrant friends. Welcome to Healthy Living. How do we safeguard the young from the harms of smoking? Today we share with you a talk given by Mr. Patrick Reynolds, a caring man from the United States who established the Foundation for a Smoke-Free America and is a recent recipient of the Shining World Hero Award from Supreme Master Ching Hai. In April 2009, Mr. Reynolds was invited to Greece by Health Minister Avramopoulos to help build public awareness of Greece's new non-smoking law, which took effect July 1, 2009, and to call attention to the serious health hazards posed by secondhand smoke. There was much news coverage as Mr. Reynolds was profiled by many national Greek media outlets. These days, Mr. Reynolds Foundation is contacting health ministers in China, Russia, India, the Middle East, South Korea, and other nations with high smoking rates. He hopes to meet publicly with each country's health minister and the children of each nation to call public attention to the problem of tobacco use. The Greek Health Ministry sent a strong letter of support detailing their experience with him saying, Mr. Reynolds gave a well-informed, polished, and persuasive speech and assisted us in promoting the Greek state's agenda on tobacco through the very positive national media coverage of his visit. Moreover, his talk to youth at one of our local schools was a tremendous success. Patrick Reynolds is a frequent speaker at United States middle schools and high schools, presenting his unique motivational talk the truth about tobacco, with passion and authenticity. He is also a popular guest lecturer on university campuses, giving his talk, Tobacco Wars. Over the years, Patrick has now presented his live talk to over 150,000 students. In 2006, Mr. Reynolds released a DVD of a live talk for youth, a talk with your kids about smoking. We are pleased to present to you excerpts of that talk he gave to 1,000 ninth graders in this third part of a three-part program. Sean Marcy was a popular track star at his high school. There he is. He won 28 medals in track competitions. He was healthy. He was athletic. He was well-liked. He never thought that anything could happen to him, even from a little dipping. He never thought he'd get addicted, but he was unable to quit. And one day he came home to his mom and he said, Mom, Mom, my tongue hurts. And she said, well, where's it hurting, son? And he said, well, it's about hurting here. And she looked and she said, well, how long has it been hurting? And he said, about two weeks. Has it gotten any better? No. Well, we better go to the doctor. They went to the doctor. They ran some tests. And a few Days later, Sean's lounging around the house, watching TV like he always did. And he heard the phone ring, and he heard his mom pick up the phone in her bedroom like she always did. And a little while later, he heard something come from his mom's room, and he went over to the door, and he realized that she was sobbing inside. And he went through the door, and he came up behind his mom, and he said, Mom, what's wrong? And she looked at him. And she turned and she said, son, you have cancer in your tongue. We've got to go to the hospital. And they went to the hospital and they had to cut his tongue out. And he could never talk again. He was 18 years old. And a year later, the cancer had not gone away and they had to, he had to have another operation, which they cut out part of his neck muscles and part of his jaw and part of his nose. The cancer had spread. And after that, the cancer continued to spread and he still did not had not been cured, and he had to have more of his face cut off. And I'm going to show you a picture now of what Sean Marcy looked like at 19. Half of his jaw removed, half of his nose removed. And he knew that he was going to die. And Sean's best friend came, and he was in terrible, terrible pain, the pain. And his best friend came down from Chicago and he sat on Sean's bedside and he said, man, I wanted to get old with you. You're my best friend. You have been since childhood. 
You said, what's happened to you is terrible. What if we got, what if we got a photographer to take a picture of you so other teens could see? And he began to shake his head in shame, and he had no tongue. He could not talk, so he gestured for paper and pencil, and he wrote these words. He wrote, no, no, I don't want to be photographed like this. Not like this, I feel so ashamed. And his friend said, what if other teens could get the message and see that picture of you? Maybe they wouldn't use chewing tobacco and what happened to you would not happen to them. And he thought about it and he was very reluctant, but he finally allowed this picture to be taken with his track medals on his chest, as though to say, so you can see that I was somebody. And he let this picture be taken as a gift to you, and to you, and to you, and to all of you. And his best friend persisted and said, do you have some words that if they could get into the hearts and minds of our teens, if they could hear it, what you said, what would the words be? And he nodded, and his eyes began to well with water, and he wrote these words as a message to each and every one of you. He wrote, don't dip snuff. And not too long after that, Sean Marcy died at the age of 19. The story of Sean Marcy. Take a look and remember. So, that's what chewing tobacco can do. We'll soon return with more from a talk with your kids about smoking. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Healthy Living. This is the third part of a three-part program featuring excerpts from A Talk With Your Kids About Smoking, a DVD by Patrick Reynolds, founder of the Foundation for a Smoke-Free America. We now continue with Mr. Reynolds' talk. We've seen big billboards up with anti-smoking messages on the billboards or on TV. And a lot of teens, we think, are rebelling against that and saying they're telling us what to do. A fourth factor in the increase in teen smoking, I believe, has been that a lot of young people today don't believe in the future. We have marketing studies from Coca-Cola in 1994 that said that young people today have a keen sense of diminished expectations. They have a low outlook intense anxiety about the future. A lot of young people today are worried they're not going to live very long. Time magazine, May 3rd, 1999, said 50% of children ages 9 to 17, a Yankelevich partner study said that 50% of kids aged 9 to 17 are worried they're not going to live very long. Something's wrong with this picture. Because if a lot of young people feel that the future is looking dim, well, why not use drugs? Why not use alcohol? Why not smoke? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the future is looking incredible. The future holds wondrous things for us. First, if you have those feelings, talk to somebody about it. Talk to somebody. Don't turn your back and isolate and try and do it alone and walk away. Talk to somebody. Talk to your parents. If you can't talk to your parents, you talk to a trusted teacher. You talk to the school counselor. You don't carry around a, a deep, dark secret all by yourself. It's too hard, and it's too costly. Talk to somebody about it. It's by talking about our problems and our difficulties that we heal our problem. That's how we heal best. 
I can't bring my father back. I can't bring the sadness and the grief and the anger I feel back. But by talking about my anger, by talking about my sadness, about that to another person, I heal. So talk about what's bothering you. Number two, while it's good to talk about negative things we're feeling and thinking, it's also good to affirm the positive and to try to think positive as well. I can't get a job in the future. There won't be a good job out there for me. There will be a great job out there for me. We ban those negative thoughts and try and bring in positive ones if we're having too many negative thoughts. I'm not going to go say hello to that person. They wouldn't like me anyway. I am going to say hello to that person. And even if they don't like me, I'll have fun saying hello. I could never own my own business. I can own my own business one day if I want to. I will go to a community college. I will study small business management. And I will learn. And I will have my own business one day. I can't do it. I can do it. And so on. Number three. What is wealth? Is wealth about material things? We live in a society that has ads bombarding us from television every day telling us that we've got to buy this new car, we've got to have this new thing. Wealth is not about material things entirely. It's about the time we share with our parents. It's about the love we get at home. It's about the incredible sad times and the happy, intense, joyous times we have with our friends. It's about communing with nature and going outside on a cold winter's day and saying yes to life. It's about communing with God. That's wealth. Sometimes if you enjoy a little time alone and are okay with it, that's wealth. Finally, I want to share with you today my faith, my intense faith, that there's something wonderful coming in this 21st century. But whatever you believe, and whatever you believe, and whatever you believe, and whatever you believe, and whatever all of you believe, I want to share with you my faith, my rock-solid faith, that there are wondrous things coming in this 21st century of ours. And we're going to need to hold on to our health and not smoke, and not drink, and not do drugs, because we're going to need our health every bit of it in those wondrous and amazing years ahead. Yes, the world is tough, and it's by our struggles that we define our characters and who we are. And yes, you can do it. You've got what it takes. Welcome to the world of adults. But I want to tell you in closing, that I have a vision. I have a vision of the coming smoke-free, tobacco-free society. And mark my words, the tobacco-free society is coming one day. It's coming in this 21st century, in this new millennium that we have. Already in California, we have laws passed by the state legislature, which statewide give us a 100% smoking ban in restaurants, in nightclubs, in freestanding bars. You can't smoke indoors in most of California. And those laws are coming here. And one day, we're going to have a tobacco-free society. Thank you very much. Thank you. We would like to convey our heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Patrick Reynolds for his gratitude, love, wisdom, and noble leadership in helping to create a world that is a healthier and better place for everyone to live. Thank you, our caring and intelligent viewers, for being with us today on Healthy Living. Up next is Science and Spirituality, after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. May our planet always be a place of constructive living and high thinking.
For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash HL.